Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. I am standing in front of what is fast becoming my new favorite tool in the shop. And uh, let me give you the 30 second version of what it was and what it is. So this is a vintage Acme model belt sander and it, um, it's from the 50s. It's so old that the standard belts are not quite standard. So in other words, the standard belt size for this is four by 80 and you gotta get those custom made. Just to give you a heads up. So what we have done with this edge sander is fight with it for the last couple years. We used to do uh, try to do radiuses with it and we were able to also use it as a regular edge sanding uh, unit too. And the reason that we were able to do that is because one of the features of this tool is that the, uh, well the platen side that has the, the table 90 degrees to the platen is uh, one feature. And then you also can use the opposite side. It was intended to be a multi-purpose tool. And um, so we were able to kind of fiddle around with that for a while. And one of the things we had been talking about doing was building a deadhead sander. And what we essentially did was convert our old Acme belt sander into a deadhead sander. So what is a deadhead sander? Well, uh, this is an older school tool that they had at Gibson and Fender, and who knows, maybe they still have it. Uh, if you do a search for deadhead sander for a guitar, you'll probably find a handful of images, but not very many. Uh, I know Bruce Bennett has uh, claims to have built a couple of them, one for Gibson and one for Warrior guitars. Um, but the fact of the matter is, you, you couldn't just go out and buy them, you had to, you had to make them. And uh, who the hell would use a deadhead sander anymore when everyone goes to CNC now? Okay, one other thing about the deadhead sander, they don't call it a deadhead sander because it likes to listen to that trucking song. Uh, they call it a deadhead because, um, and this isn't a true deadhead sander, but the, the platen that you use to actually uh, do the work on does not have a roller on it. Um, so ideally on the really old school deadhead sanders it would have a drive wheel and then a deadhead end and there'd be no, um, there'd be no adjustment wheel for the belt to stay on. So what we were able to do is we were able to use the same drive wheel and the same um, adjustment wheel but we were able to build a new platen here that works great for necks. All right, so I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's back the train up. Um, why would you want to have a deadhead sander? Well, as you know, if you've watched any of my videos, we are trying to make necks as consistently as we possibly can. So we have a series of steps that are all written down. You're writing stuff down, aren't you? <laughs> and um, what we do is we go from you know, a big blank of wood to something like this. And I'm jumping ahead several steps, obviously, but the fretboard is radiused. And then we cut the neck out and we get it to rough size, which is about 900, 920 thousandths at the nut and 950 thousandths around the 12 or 14th fret. We go ahead and lay that out. We, um, I don't know if you can see how much of this, I'll take some pictures of it. Um, we put a round over on it, which is good as we can get given the round over. We've got a jig on the, my beloved pin router, yada, yada, yada. So next started to look like this and we had a bunch of necks. They went really fast. Um, so it came down to, well, it's either time to start getting the files and rasps out and go through the arduous task of carving a bunch of necks or figure out something new. Now before we go any further, I wanna say that I actually do enjoy carving necks, especially on mahogany. Um, and I've carved a lot, a lot, a lot of necks. Um, but to keep things consistent and to keep things fast, we decided to give this guy a try. So let's talk about what we did. One of the really, really cool things about building this sander was we got to meet um, the people at A&H Abrasives. And um, let me just tell you a little bit about A&H Abrasives in a story that relates to this unit. So when Chris and I were laying out what this 
platen table was going to be like, we decided that we needed the belt to go from four inches by 80 inches to four inches by 92 and a half. Um, on a Saturday, I contacted a and Abrasives who make custom size belts and I told them what I needed and on Tuesday, I had three of them. Now, what you're probably thinking is, well, yeah, but how much were they? Um, each belt was $11, so <laughs> this was a no-brainer. Even if this machine didn't work, I wouldn't exactly be out a ton of money. So if you have an older tool that you're looking for, um, you know, uh, sandpaper for, A&H Abrasives, look them up on the web. They can always get you sorted out.